Now, my next guest shot to infamy as the so-called Tawi Jihadi after she became the first British woman to be jailed for joining ISIS. Aged just 24, Tarina Shaquille told her family she was taking her toddler son on a beach holiday to Turkey, but instead used her student loan to cross the border into Syria to join the terror group in 2014. But unlike the ISIS bride Shamima Begum, she put her life on the line by actually fleeing as the horrors of the caliphate became horrifically clear. Tarina was arrested when she landed back at Heathrow Airport in early 2015, and after being convicted of terror offences a year later, she was sentenced to six years behind bars. After completing a de-radicalisation programme and being released halfway through her sentence, Tarina now believes she's fully reformed and is working as a cleaner as she rebuilds her life. She's also making her own TV documentary that she hopes will provide a warning to other young women at the risk of being radicalised by terrorists. But is all of this really enough for the British public to give her a second chance? Well, she has bravely decided to give her first live TV interview tonight, and she joins me in the studio. Tarina, look, it, it, it is so lovely to have you here. I, I watched your documentary. I have to admit, on the whole, I liked you and I believed you. But I cannot understand... I simply cannot understand how someone who seemingly had so much going for them, lived in a great country like the UK, had a supportive family, would defect to fight for ISIS. And can you understand why some folk are going to be sitting at home watching tonight saying that three years in jail, it's not enough. It's not a big enough punishment for what you did. I mean... I, I totally get that reaction um, about three years not being long enough, and some people may be of that opinion. However, at the time when I decided to run away, you know, yes, I was living in a great country like England and had a supportive family, but the life I was living at that time, in my marriage, a lot of domestic violence, really unhappy, unfortunately, years of that had built up to me feeling like I, I, there was nothing else for me to do. I had nowhere else to turn, nowhere else to go. And a supportive family, when you're speaking to people online and being groomed, you know, you're isolated from your family. Okay, so how, how old were you at this point? 24. So you're 24 years old, and you go down what I would describe as the rabbit hole of social media. Yeah. And it's Facebook where you met these folk who ended up radicalising you and encouraging you to go to Turkey. So what happened on, on, on social media? Why on social media were you all of a sudden posting ISIS messages, seeming to support this organisation? How on earth can Facebook radicalise an ordinary British woman to that extent? I mean, I was speaking to people who were in Syria fighting and they would always put their point across and justify what they were fighting for and... You know, it became apparent that they would say to me, you need to make hijra. Hijra is Islamic migration. And kind of led you to believe that you have to go and live there, otherwise you'll go to hell if you stay in a country that's not a Muslim country. And you kind of felt like it was your obligation, really. So it was to do with the people I was speaking to and the things that they were saying. OK, so you end up in Syria. And unlike some of the other ISIS brides that we've seen very quickly you realise, holy cow, I have made the biggest mistake of my life. Yeah. But can you just confirm to me, can you look me in the eye and confirm to me that you were not responsible for any violence over there? Because there are some messages that you sent that have raised the question as to whether you were or not. No, absolutely not. So you were never involved in any murders of anyone, any killings of anyone, you were never involved in any violence personally? No, absolutely not. And so you're over there, you're in a house, you're at least witnessing terrible things going on around you, and you realise you've made the biggest mistake of your life. Yeah. So how does it feel in that moment? Despair. You know, feeling that I will never be able to come back, and even if I did, you know, is there any point going back anyway because I'm in a lot of trouble when I go home? I'm going to go to prison, they're going to take my child of me. 
But it just came to the point where, you know, the need and the want to go home just became greater than thinking about what was going to happen to me upon return. So at that moment, you know, it was despair is probably the only word I can use. Torina, you're an intelligent human being. The time that you went over, ISIS were beheading Brits. Surely you knew what this organisation was about. Yes, I had seen them things in the media. And, you know, the only thing I can say is that there's no justification for that. I can only offer an explanation. And I guess I just become so consumed in, you know, searching for this euphoric happiness ha as it had been sold to me and, you know, making Hydra migrating for the purpose of living in a Muslim country. I guess I became fixated on that mm. as opposed to... Well, I should have. But you had a normal upbringing. I mean, the rumours were you were a fan of The Only Way is Essex, which is why you're referred to as the Tawi Jihadi. What was it that turned you against our culture? I was never turned against the culture. If I had turned against the culture, I don't think seven weeks would have been enough to mm. bring me back to loving the culture. It wasn't about that. No, but you would argue that ISIS was at war with us. I mean, look at the Manchester arena, arena bombings, you know, the, the, killings of those, the killing of those uh, very young Brits. ISIS had, um, you know, is responsible for a lot of horrific things. Any attacks that happened on the West happened when I had already returned. OK. So, so then you get out, and it's quite a miracle that somehow you are able to make it out of Syria and back to Turkey. But when you arrive back in the UK and you're arrested by the police, you don't tell them the truth. So I want to play uh, some of your police interview and I'll get you to respond off the back. To leave this place, why have you brought me here? I don't want to be in this place. I want to go back to Antalya. And he said, no, no. It's impossible for me to let you leave because... Maybe you will alert the police of this place. Maybe you will bring problems for this place. It's impossible I'll let you leave. And I said, but you brought me here and I don't want to be here. And then they just drove um, across this farmland and then well, we'd entered Syria. That wasn't true, was it? No. The judge in your trial said that you embraced ISIS. He sent you down for six years. You served three years in prison, three years on licence. Were you de-radicalised before you went to prison? I would say it's been a process of whilst being in prison, being outside of prison. But I think once I had made the decision to come back and just being here, I had forgotten about Syria and dealing with the trauma of being on bail and not having my mm. child with me. I'd pretty much turned my back on that anyway. Because the issue that you've got now, Tarina, and of course I absolutely believe once people have gone to jail, they have served their time, of course people have to be rehabilitated and given a second chance. But you saw what happened with Usman Khan, who yeah. was also out of prison when he committed that atrocity at London Bridge. So how can we trust you? How can the British people trust that you are truly de-radicalised now? You know, I've been home, I think it's going to be eight years this year. It's, I have been in prison for three years. You know, my actions, I guess, speak for themselves. I've, since coming out of prison, you know, have, like, two jobs. I work 50 hours plus a week. I work hard. And like... I'm delighted about that. <laughs> Thank you. No, I am, because like, you've I'm, got to build this up. I'm invested in a life here, and that's, that's all I can do. Do you love the UK now? I've always loved the UK, and I always will love the UK. Now, Tarina, we've got Shamima Begum, yeah. who is in one of these camps in Syria. And the government doesn't want her to return. The British public doesn't want her to return. Do you think she deserves a second chance like you got a second chance? I, think I get asked this question all the time. And, you know, I always... I, I can't give a yes answer because I, I can't fierce, fiercely advocate for somebody when I don't know what their intentions may be when they come home. But if somebody genuinely, truly... Is like, wow, I made a mistake, I want to go home, send me to prison, then I guess so. I can't say no because I've been in a similar situation. However, you know, they will have whatever information they have about her and which is why they've made decisions that they've chosen to make. So, you know, I'm all for redemption and giving people a second chance, but 
in, unless I knew more about the situation or what people's genuine intentions were upon return, I wouldn't really put myself out there to... Have you been in touch with her at all? Have you reached out? No, never. I don't. What advice would you, would you give her? I don't think that anybody that's out there that wants to come home realises just how much of a long journey it is ahead. I think, I know I definitely thought when I was there, you know, as soon as I get back to England, everything's going to be OK, this nightmare will be over, I'm going to be back home, I can put it all behind me. It, it's just the start of a really long, a really long journey, really. And if there's any young person out there right now yeah. getting involved, in the world of radical Islamist terrorism online, considering leaving the UK to join a terrorist organisation, what is your message to them? Absolutely, don't do it. Don't get involved. Reach out. Speak to friends and family, because often groomers will isolate the individual. You know, speak to somebody if you're being told things are from Islam, go and speak to an imam. Just reach out. Don't. Don't never take nothing from one source. You know, I've seen people along the journey who are, you know, doing real life sentences, like 25, 30 years for getting involved in this and because their partner had done something and, you know, just don't make that mistake. Can I give you a piece of advice, Tarina? Yeah. I think you should make it your life's work to, to help de-radicalise young British folk who are getting mixed up in terrorist organisations. And I think that is the way that Brits will start to trust you again. Yeah. And I think it's very important work because we see it happening on a daily basis. Yeah. More and more Brits getting involved in radical terrorism. And I look at your story and I think, OK, you are back here now, but actually your life is going to be a million times difficult more uh, than it would have been if you hadn't had yeah. made that terrible decision to go and join ISIS in Syria. So I think you should make that your life's work. I'll and I think that. that is the way that you can turn a terrible decision, yeah. and I'm never going to say that it wasn't a terrible decision. I think joining ISIS was the worst mistake you could ever make, and it potentially caused a lot of damage. Yeah. But I think you need to make it your mission now to stop other young Brits doing the same thing, because they should learn from you. I mean, and that's the plan.